3rd. Joining us now is the Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus. Uh, Reince, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, do you have any indication about voter turnout tonight? Because that could be really significant in determining whether Trump brings in a lot, a lot more Republicans, newer Republicans to support him, or Cruz gets his way. What, what are you hearing? Well, I mean, I, when you have this many candidates running, obviously, I think you're going to have higher turnout. Now, how high it goes and who those people are, I mean, that's obviously what, what everyone wants to try to figure out. Every campaign is working hard now, looking at their data, trying to figure out uh, what those numbers look like. But, you know, they're not, we don't have a couple people running. So, obviously, everyone has their pockets of support. And their job now is to go through their lists and go through both emails and phone contacts and data that they've mined over the last year and then figure out how to get all those people to vote. So naturally you would guess that turnout's going to be pretty high. But uh, again, uh, who's, who are those folks is, is what it's all about. In recent uh, you know, elections in, in Iowa, they've often said there are three tickets out of Iowa. The top three candidates will move on to New Hampshire and then South Carolina. You still buy that or are there more tickets out of Iowa right now? Well, you know what? I, 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 you, you don't know. What I, what I try to explain to people is at some point, and it's not going to be today and it's not going to be up to New Hampshire, but at some point, people are going to start looking at delegates and they're going to start trying to figure out what the delegate count is because ultimately for all the viewers the delegates of the Republican National Committee decide who the nominee is these primaries influence the delegates on how they're going to vote on the floor of a convention so when we get into a March 1st Super Tuesday and you have 16 17 states going you all aren't going to sit around and say, well, what happened in Tennessee? What about Mississippi? What about Alabama? You're going to say, what's the delegate count? And once that conversation starts, I think, I, I, I think it's, it's going to be sort of a, a little bit of a slower uh, roll through the, through the month, of Mar uh, month of March. For those candidates who are still left standing, but I, I assume you agree that after That's Iowa, right. there That's probably right. will be a few of these candidates who will drop out, suspend their campaigning after New Hampshire, maybe some more than maybe after South Carolina. These things are going to go relatively quickly, and eventually there'll be a much smaller Republican field, right? Yeah, you would think so because there's just not enough hard cash to go around. So, I mean, it's not, I'm not, I'm not trying to suggest something that the candidates might not like to hear, but the truth is, is that when you need hard FEC money, meaning, you know, the individual personal donations in order to pay for a campaign, there's only so far you can go uh, without having significant success along the way. So these early test states are a big part of that winnowing the field time frame. Then once we get into March, that's when 60% of all the delegates are going to be awarded. So February is about 5%, March is about 60%. But then you balance all of that with exactly what you've indicated, which is, do you know, do you have the sustainability to get through the, the, the month of February? That's where this stuff starts separating folks. From the standpoint of the Republican Party, Ryan, and you're the chairman. Uh, is it smart to have Iowa first, New Hampshire second, or you think it's time to rethink <laughs> how uh, the Republican Party nominates someone to be their candidate? Well, we've been rethinking this every four years for thir 30 years, Wolf, and you know it's a you're hitting on one of the great debates of our convention every year, and I know it's maybe boring to a lot of people, but the rules of how the primary process takes place is always subject to a huge debate. I've always said there's no sacred cows in our party. Uh, the primary process, the early states, the carve-outs, this is a conversation that will take place at the convention. I'm not breaking any news here. It happens every four years, and people are going to evaluate it and whether or not more tweaks need to take place to the to the scheduling and the calendar. But we're happy with where we're at. Uh, we've never had, I think, a better national party prepared for victory before. And we've the first time in the history of our party, at least as long as people around here remember, all the states are in compliance. We feel good about what's, what's on the calendar. And I remember after Romney lost, uh, what, almost four years ago, you did that very famous post-mortem to come up with some new ideas. How's that working out? Are you implementing <clears throat> the recommendations? 
Yeah, we're implementing all of them. I mean, we have uh, two less weeks of proportionality. Just remember, obviously, when you have a lot of candidates, it makes it a little bit tougher. I mean, as far as the distribution of delegates, makes it a little slower, obviously. But under the old rules, when Mitt Romney ran, the entire month of March, it was mandated that all the delegates be distributed proportionately. What we did is we cut that number in half. So now starting on March 15th, the states have the option of going winner take all. So this, uh, the whole breakdown comes down to about 55% of the states are proportional. 45 are either hybrid or winner take all. Hybrid's very similar to winner take all. So um, we think these are significant changes. Earlier convention, and we have no violating states jumping the calendar like they did four years ago when Florida jumped in January and everything sort of avalanched earlier. So the calendar, I think, is in much better shape. Brian Priebus, uh, thanks very much for joining us.